Hi, this is the fifth lesson in the series about brushes in Photoshop. Once again, this is the way brushes behaved in CS4 and earlier. They changed some in CS5, and we'll talk about the changes after this series is over. If you missed some of the earlier lessons, there's a link to the last one in the description for this one. So this time we're going to be talking about dual brushes, and yes, that does mean combining two different brushes and using them at the same time. A sort of brush within a brush. Like a dweem within a dweem, only of course completely different. It works by putting the attributes of the secondary brush inside the brush stroke of the primary brush. So, let's uh, start by opening the brushes panel, which you do by clicking on that button there. If you don't happen to have that button visible, you can go to Window Brushes, or you can use F5 to open up the brushes panel. So we are looking at the Brush Tip Shape panel, which you can get by clicking Brush Tip Shape up here. And now I'm going to start fresh and get rid of all of this stuff by going over here to the menu on the top right and choosing Clear Brush Controls. And that clears out all the options and parameters and gives us a clean slate. I'm going to disable smoothing because I don't like it. And now I'm going to set up my primary brush. So this is a round brush and we'll just continue to use that. And I'm going to make the diameter a little larger, about 50 pixels more or less. And I'm going to leave the hardness at 100% and I'm going to tighten up the spacing so that I get a nice clean line here. And then I'm going to set up the dual brush by clicking on the words dual brush, which enables it and opens up the panel at the same time. This panel is going to look a little bit familiar. You'll notice that a lot of this stuff is the same stuff that we were just looking at in the brush tip shape, because once again we're choosing our brush tip. So I'm going to start by choosing the maple leaf up there. For the diameter I'm just going to go ahead and use the sample size. You can tell this is a sampled brush and it's the size it was made because there's a use sample size button and it's dimmed. I'm going to change the blend mode, there are a lot of them up here, to multiply so that you can see what I'm doing down here. And then I'm going to increase the spacing so that you can see separate little maple leaves. Now we also have scatter and count down here, and those work exactly the way you're already used to from the scattering lesson. Scatter without both axes enabled will scatter the brush dab perpendicular to the stroke, and with both axes enabled it scatters in a radial pattern around the stroke just like it did in scattering. I'm going to disable both axes and leave a little bit of scattering in here. And of course you can also increase the count, which adds to the number of brush dabs laid down each time. We're going to leave that at 1. And also up here next to the blend modes, you'll notice that there's a little flip checkbox. I recommend that you leave this enabled unless you have something like words, which will not look good if they're flipped as your secondary brush. So um, all that does, of course, is flip it randomly. It doesn't flip all of them, just some of them adds a sort of a random flip to the mix. You'll also notice that there's already an angle jitter going on here, and you can't control it. It does that because dual brushes are designed to make patterns inside brush strokes, and the pattern looks better with an angle jitter, so it's there automatically. And now, let's see what this looks like when you actually make a stroke. And there you see the maple leaves being truncated. But notice that if I go back past a maple leaf, it fills it in as long as I'm still on the same stroke. It will also add another one, um, just like that. But it seems to remember where the previous dab was and fill that in if you're on the same stroke. The way to stop that, of course, is to lift your pen because when you go back past with a different stroke, you don't have that action happening. That's just something that you're going to need to be aware of because you're going to want to watch that. So that's what it looks like. Now let's get rid of these by using um, undo, that's command Z on a Mac, control Z on a PC, and step backwards with option command Z on a Mac or alt control Z on a PC to get back to a clean, empty canvas. And I should be painting on brush stroke, not on ground, just in case. And now I want to show you some stuff with a soft brush, because just like the stuff with texture, a lot of it will only show up in the different blend modes if you have some gray pixels in the mix, which means a soft brush or other dynamics so that you can use the mouse on the tablet to control that. So I'm going to change the brush using the keyboard by holding down the shift key and using the left square bracket. Notice that the cursor gets a little bit smaller as I do that. That's because I have normal cursors which only show where the brush is 50% or greater. And now I have the brush stroke fading out at the edges because I'm using the multiply blend mode. I'm going to undo that. And if I change to some of these other blend modes, you can see down here that I can get a stroke with just the secondary brush showing on the edges of it, um, depending on which kind of stroke I'm using. So you can do a lot of the stuff with that. 
Now I'm not going to go into all of the blend modes and show you stuff in detail because you can experiment and find all that out. And I want to show you ways in which you can actually use the brush. So I'm going to go back to multiply for the blend mode here. And I'm going to turn off the dual brush so that we can set up the primary brush in the brush tip shape. And this time I'm going to go for the maple leaf again. And I'm going to increase the diameter just a little bit. And I'm going to pull out the spacing quite a lot so that we get separate maple leaves. And now I'm going to go to Shape Dynamics and I'm going to turn off the size jitter control and turn on the size jitter so I get some jittering. And I'm also going to turn on an angle jitter. Remember, this is the thing that you automatically get inside the secondary brush, but you need to set it if you want it for the primary brush. The control is off and the rest of the stuff is set up like this. I think I'll put the flips on. So um, if you want any of this other stuff enabled, if you want to play with it, go ahead. But that's that for now. And now set up the dual brush by choosing this one, which is dry brush light flow for the secondary brush tip. And as you can see, that puts some specks inside the brush here. And if I increase the spacing, it becomes more tenuous. So this actually is controlled more by the spacing and by the scatter than by anything else. So I'm going to increase the scatter a little bit and pull the spacing down a bit. And I'm going to increase the diameter too so I get larger dots inside. And we can also increase the count to vary some things here. I'm going to undo the brush stroke that we had here. And now when I make a brush stroke, I get this lovely little scattered pattern inside. And notice it, it does fill back in if I hold down the brush, if I keep the same stroke. So use short strokes if you don't want that to happen. But you can get some really interesting sorts of things going on here that look like you took a lot of time with a stencil and a toothbrush, but it really takes almost no time at all. And speaking of time, we are pretty much out of it. But you can see the enormous possibilities in this. When you combine this kind of brush with things like color dynamics, which is what we're going to be doing next, you can get amazing results in almost no time at all. So play around and have fun with it. Until next time, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.